So we've got a new term, a new topic. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at my screen. And share my screen. And take a look at some easy backgrounds. Oh, what is this? Let's continue with that. Yeah, screen. we don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to erase all my backup. Please and thank you. Let's open folder to view files. Okay, let's look for BGs. So I Ooh, characters have got look. BGs. These oh, are bricks. pulled right from movies. And I'm sure some of us have a character from the waist up. We don't know what to do in the background. Easy. Bricks. A wall. A wall is a super easy one. Sky. Sky is used all the time in films. Uh -huh. Sky. <laughs> Another wall. This one's a little more complicated, but really, how much of the stairs do you need to draw? Couple lines, couple little baluster things, half of a ending ornament thing there. I mean, not a whole lot. Sky again. Brown. This is another one that is used quite often where you'll have the character at a slightly bird's eye view. I mean, you can tell she's not straight on the camera because we can see this top seam. Actually, let me see if I can make this a little bigger. Okay. We can see the top seam of her clothing. So we're looking on top of her shoulders, but really it's super easy background to just put whatever texture the ground is. Sky, <laughs> how many times are you gonna see sky, right? Sky! sky. <laughs> Sitting in a chair, but behind here, I mean, it's just a wall, it's uh, or a curtain. So we don't even have to deal with uh, things in a throne room behind there. Usually it's propped up against a wall. Sky with a bridge, which is how many straight lines? Maybe five, six? So backgrounds, even though we think of backgrounds being these incredible incredibly detailed, linear perspective, all the things. We can do 80% of it plants, which are easier to draw. And then a little bit of a building over there and nobody knows the difference that uh, we didn't really want to draw a, a super complicated background. Some branches and sky. Leaning up against a wall in a window frame. But all of these are vertical lines, horizontal lines. We don't have to worry about perspective. We don't have to worry about a whole lot of detail. Maybe the bike, I would not draw the bike. But <laughs> definitely we can do some backgrounds that give characters a world to belong in without it being a headache. So let's go ahead and go back to Elmo. I'm going to be working on pencil and paper. You can work on computer oh if you like. But I'm going to switch over here. We were having a little bit of lighting issues in the earlier class, so I might have to set up my light. Yeah, sadly, I did not do finish the possum one in time. I still have the other one, but like I didn't finish the possum because I was having trouble with the possum. Oh, the one that was exhausted on the chair? Or no? Yeah. Yeah? That's all right. Well, yeah. Oh. only draw as fast as we draw. Right? I like that possum. So you can finish them this week. Yeah. We'll still like them next week. <laughs> there we go. No, let's go yeah. This Barbie almost wants to ask you, like, I don't know, maybe I'll do it later. Like, ask you something about drawing. Go ahead and do it now while I'm setting up my light. Okay, I'm having a lot of trouble with uh, two things. I'm gonna say it while while I'm getting it out. Uh, two things. One, I'm having trouble with like the the perspective on the leg. I'm worried about that. I'm worried about. I'm also can't figure out how to do a hand. The hand. Kind of. Oh, I wanna. I have an idea of them holding a wrench in their hand, in her in her hand. Uh -huh. But I, yeah, I'm having a lot of trouble. Like I I have it go this way or I have it go this way. You know, and then I just have trouble drawing that hand, grasping a tool. Personally, I start with the hand because the hand's harder 
than the tool <laughs> for me. And after I have the hand position, then it's a little easier to just stick an object in it. Bye. And that would be my process anyway. I know some people do it opposite. They would draw the wrench first and then have the hand clasp around it. Oops. Yeah, also I'm worried about this knee that doesn't, I'm worried it doesn't come across as like a perspective thing. Oh, make you, it, it looks larger. like you lowered it. Yeah, make it bigger. When things get closer, they get larger and they also make that thigh shorter. The other thing you can do is just place it higher, like uh, Kristen said, and then it'll look yeah, like it's it, going back in space also. Yeah, whatever. Or what might help is drawing, no easy way to say it, just drawing her butt, drawing her whole pelvis so that you can figure out how the legs would connect to it. And that's going to decide a lot uh, for how the legs are going to behave depending on if she's got uh, it like seated I don't know, how do I say it? like closer to the front of the seat? Yeah, and is like laying back or is it more upright on the sit bones? But it's looking good to me. It looks uh, believable. It looks to me like the, letter, the leg that is on our right, so that's mm -hmm. her left leg, it looks like that foot is farther back toward the chair and so the knees in my mind, should not be at the same height, that that knee should be up higher. Oh yeah, I can see that. But um, I mean, you might, I, I don't know, just looks like the knees shouldn't be on the same level. Yeah, because if one is straight up, perpendicular to the floor, that one's gonna be long. And then the one that's tilted towards us is going to be shorter if I could demonstrate with pencils. Right, if that one's straight up and that one's tilted, then it gets shorter. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, that is a good point. Yeah, so just try it, sketch it. That's I, I think the hand is pretty good. Yeah, the thing I just good. doodled now. Yeah, how many fingers does this character have? I based off a Sonic character, so five. Okay. Five and also the ones in this tiny image uh, amuse me because they look weird. Yeah, they do. They're <laughs> cute, but <laughs> yeah, like if you ignore the hands, it's a cute image. I think the the um, what's your first finger called? Index finger could could come up around the thumb a little more in your drawing. It looks so short. The other thing you can do is go grab something about the size of a wrench and see what your fingers do. <laughs> Draw your hand. Yeah, I do that all the time. That. Yeah. <laughs> like if you grab a ruler or something and go like, okay, if I was grabbing this, what do my fingers do? So much of art is just that kind of stuff. See, uh, I wouldn't have them so far yeah. back. I'd let them come up and, and actually when I grab something, my fingers are often way overlapped by my thumb. Of course, it depends on how big it is. So sometimes also yeah yeah it'll depend on like how strong she's gripping it yeah like yeah. for a sword definitely the index finger is crossing the oh, hold on my thing is freezing okay but like if she's like basically dropping it then the index finger might then be they would straight down. yeah straight and not even holding it at all so that's uh, where your storytelling comes in but we'll probably have time at the end of class if you want some help with like a draw over or something. Uh, thank you. Thank you for thank you for helping me. No problem. You That's what her. I'm here for. So just like most of those drawings, we're going to do a character that is uh, pretty much in a close up like a bus shot. Whoops. I have like that full body crow character that I've shown you. Cut yeah. her off at the waist and you'll have a bus. I was just going to say, yeah, you can just crop it down and then that'll work too. But the, uh, what should I say? The purpose of a background is to help 
our characters not be in a void. So even like your little crow character, from what I remember, she was kind of standing here in a void. So when yeah. we're thinking of backgrounds, we do have to think of composition, just like we've done with story art very many times. What kind of borders are we going to have? Because we are going to fill up the rest of it with background. Today we're doing a bust shot. So if I have my character like this, I still have to decide, do I want them right in the center? Do I want them off to one side? We know the rule of thirds. So I'm going to do a little thumbnail here and say that if this is my paper, let's think of my, my story moment. Maybe like that aerial one where she's uh, by a wall. I can have my character slightly off to the right and then I'll have that wall behind her. But since my first idea is often my worst idea, I'm going to do one more just in case. I'm a big fan of trying out ideas and comparing them side by side because it's very difficult, particularly with pencil and paper, to be like, did I like that first version before I erased it? The other thing I can do is put my character over here. Same thing, same wall. Or it's pulling out because you you are breaking up really bad. Oh no. Not well, here. You can uh, yeah, you can try rejoining the meeting if it gets too bad. Sometimes that helps. Uh, uh headspace. My went out. You broke up so bad. And then I disconnected for a minute. Oh no. Not that desperate yet, mom. Sorry. No problem. Always got to deal with these technical issues. So I've got a couple of options for myself. It's the same figure. It's just being placed different parts of the paper at a different scale. So I think I'm going to go with this one just because I have the feeling that the character is walking this way and has space to walk, where this one gives me more of the feeling that uh, either somebody's gonna come up behind or this person is hiding. And I don't want that, I wanna go for this one instead. So my paper, I'm just gonna fold in half and I'm going to use the paper's natural borders as my Compositions border, so it can all stay on camera. And using my thumbnail as reference, I'm just going to go ahead, actually, I'm going to make the head a little bigger. Sketch in where my character is. And remember, oh, I got to darken my camera here so you can see what I'm doing. Off the paper, all the way off the paper, because this is my entire canvas. Maybe even a bit bigger head. And for now, I'm just going to do a generic little character, just enough information for us to know how they interact with the background.
And of course, it helps to think of your story. Even though we just have a sort of stone wall in the background. Deciding the kind of tone, mood, genre, something like that. So I can decide whether to make things to look creepy or if her expression should be frightened or if it's a lovely sunny day and she's just passing by the wall of the zoo. Story, story, story. It always comes back to story. I think I'll have my little Miss Generic here waving at somebody off screen or out of the picture. Hey, my connection is actually starting to get better. Awesome. Just needed to warm up, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Or maybe it'll it'll immediately become terrible again. Yet. It did. <laughs> it did. Yeah. Um, also, when you were explaining things to me, I didn't really hear much of anything. Oh, no. Just to let you know, like, I kind of got the gist of, like, yeah, I, I think uh, just of all, but uh, the draw over will probably be better then. Maybe about two more minutes just to sketch out generic character.
Once I've got my generic little character here, I'm going to pick where the horizon line is. That's going to be the straight line in the wall. And I'm going to put it a little bit below center, maybe one third of the way. And then to give myself a target of how much to tilt the other lines, I'm going to make a very shallow angle that just kind of slices off the top of my paper there. So is it trying to be parallel with your horizon? Or no, not oh, okay. parallel. We're trying to make just this very skinny wedge that's going to chop off the top of the paper there. Probably be helpful if I used a ruler for you guys. You can tell what I'm doing here. And every line in between these two needs to divide it fairly evenly. So I can't start making lines going like that. I'd have to look at this side and go, where's about the center? This side, where's about the center? And then that'll give me my next line. I'm going to subdivide it again. Just looking for about halfway on that side, about halfway on that side. If these are bricks, I might even subdivide it one more time, but I'm going to say this is more like a stone wall made out of larger chunks of rock. To do the lines on the bottom, I'm going to try my best to mirror this. So this distance here, I'm just going to double it. This distance over here, I'm just going to double it. So there will be ever so slightly a tilt. I'm going to label my lines just so that it doesn't get too confusing. This one horizon line, one, two, three.
And then to get the second line, I'll do the same thing. I look at the distance from my horizon line to that number two line. And I just double that distance on the bottom. On this size two, or excuse me, on the side, going from that horizon line to that number two line and then doubling it so that I know where it hits down here. And we're done with the, the horizontal lines anyway. So rather than make a grid, if we just, you know, make a like waffle type grid, my other eraser, we're going to try to actually make it look more irregular. Because as much as we humans try to make things perfect, they are not. In fact, let me go ahead and share screen for just a moment on that aerial picture again. Whoops, not that one, this one. So these shadows are irregular. We have some little nook and cranny shadows, but not on every single brick. We have some shine on a couple of stones, but not on every single stone. So everything is very irregular. So on my drawing, I want to have that same kind of irregularity. So if I just lightly sketch where these stones are and they don't have to be totally equal in size. And in fact, I want them to be a little bit irregular. Maybe one's a little bit slanted and we've got kind of a weird keystone in there. Once I have this kind of general layout, haphazardly sketched here and there, and don't forget the top one too, that wedge across the top. We want to have this background bleed off of every edge. Fill up the entire composition. But once I have the general layup, I can start going, all right, this one maybe has a really dark shadow in that little crevice there. Maybe here, maybe this one has a crevice, a little tiny shadow in there. I'd pick maybe five that have these little corner shadows. And rather than sprinkling them equally throughout, I would rather cluster them into kind of one area. So maybe one right there, and maybe one up here. So I tried to leave my bottom section almost dark shadow free, or crevice shadow free. And I'm just going to lightly go around that shape as if I'm drawing the actual stone, just so that we have a little bit more of the shapes of the stones and less of just lines that divided up the space. And that'll make more of these little nook and crannies, but we're not going to darken those in as much if we get this 
or let's say we were planning to take this all the way to color, we would have lighter shadows in these little crevices. want to see my what I did I, I think sure. there's a that oh. cute character I love it I like where the wall is going but she's still breaking past it so I feel like it's still not quite a background uh -huh. It's more like a texture, but if you put like a new layer and fill it with like say black and then only delete the part where the wall is so that she gets cropped right at the bottom of the wall, that would definitely be effective. I don't know if that made sense. It's like, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah. Actually, let me just show you. That might be yeah. easier. <laughs> let me start up fire alpaca really quick. Let's go file, whoops. And get a new one and I'll share my screen. So it was, whoops, my tablet's upside down. Probably because of connection errors, but let's say, here's my figure. Like your figure. And you've got the wall on this much, right? This is weird. It's weird? Well, there's no lines appearing on your fire alpaca even though i see your hand moving there, oh, there it, it is oh there's a lag huh <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so uh what i want us to practice is that if this were a comic or a movie you wouldn't have the movie frame be this and there's only background behind the person's head do you know what i mean if this were a comic panel you would either crop it here or a film you would crop it where the background ends i know you don't want to destroy your drawing so what you can do is you can get a new layer uh, da, 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 da. let me fill it in black on this new layer light me opacity so i can see where i'm cropping and just delete out where the background is so that we can have some sense of this is what it would look like if it were in a video game. This is what it would look like if it were in a comic or in a movie and not see her legs sticking out at the bottom. Does that make sense? Okay. Just for something new. Well, I like it that I'm always learning new tricks. I was thinking how easy this 
would be digitally until I started drawing in all the little guys. And I thought, well, how easy <laughs> it is to have her stand in front of them. So I don't have to draw them all. Yep. So you don't have to draw them all. That's right. Um, if you have a speech balloon, that's even easier. You can block out that part too. But if you do have a have layers, you can draw one brick wall and use it for lots of different pictures. This is true. Absolutely true. Hi, friend. And then real quick, we'll try out that cloud background that seems to be so commonly used. Okay, I want to show my brick wall first. Oh, that's right. Let me go ahead and spotlight. Up a little bit. Ooh, there you go. So much better than a blank page. Yeah, she's just a dumb little character, but um, she's a picture now. Yeah, absolutely. A whole entire illustration. Bricks are so easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's an easy one. But it does seem like it's almost worthwhile to create a nice brick background, just one, a digital. Oh, yeah. Brick. And then you can use it over and over. You can yeah. put different colors. You can colors. make it bigger or smaller, color it differently. Yeah. yeah. So it can look like, and, and you can probably tilt it in different ways. To... Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mickey, did you put a frame on yours so we can see how it looks? Yeah. Let's take a look. Yes. Fabulous. Oh, now that makes a it. lot of difference. Yes, background. Absolutely. Now I can feel like she's in a world, an actual a world, a place. Yes, and not just floating on the paper. Perfect. All right, let's try out. And you could, you could also move her around, make her big so she make her little move her from side to side so you could try all the different thumbnail things but oh i know digital yeah you can do all oh. the things <laughs> but that's all right that's okay we'll just plot away with pencil okie dokie let's try one with clouds so let's take another look at some of our cloud examples i probably should have sorted these but Let's try to find one that has some kind of easy close up. This one's pretty dynamic. Yeah. And we'll also practice having the character's head go right off the paper. So let's go ahead and sketch a character facing forward. Pretty much a close up with a head bleeding off screen and the shoulders going off the paper. I'm going to stop my share and put my camera back up so you can see how I go about it. Uh, spotlight for everyone, there we go. So I'm going to start with making a really big head. You can do a circle, I'm just jumping to egg shape. Have it go right off that paper. Of course, if you're working digitally, you can just draw like normal and then change it later. Okay, 
in the big shape, neck, shoulders, right off the paper. Keep in mind that this would be a screen or a comic panel. You have to fill up the whole thing. You can't just have it partially full or have the body just stop before it gets to the end of the panel. That just looks weird. Sketching your features. Go a little anime here. Determination. Oh, hey, Betsy, do you, uh -huh. do you have you ever watched Hunter x Hunter? I tried reading the manga and I didn't really care for the premise, so I'm afraid I have not. I like the anime. I've been watching the anime and I like that a lot. Cool. I feel like I watched... watched. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I, I'll comment in a minute. I feel like one of the things that made it so interesting to me was that like i guess not spoilers but the the first season or arc or whatever is them trying to get like a license to be a hunter or whatever mm -hmm. and the tests are so convoluted and people <laughs> just die like people just die in that test and no one bats an eye like, like no one yeah. cares if you die in that test Happens so it made time. me wonder if doing if getting if get if like this test was that crazy i wanted to know if the, if further on how much they could how further they could raise the stakes that's true they start out too uh too stake heavy where can you go from there uh, it well, is interesting though a lot of things happen so many things happen <laughs> now i watched about two seasons and I liked the first season when they were doing the tests. I thought that was kind of um, that the characters were being re revealed and it was interesting. And, and of course they had to die and not the main characters. So that didn't bother me, but um, I got so bored with it after the first, um, first season. I was just going, why am I watching this? this is <laughs> They just keep kind of doing the same thing over and over, and let's. That was all it was was raising the stakes. I thought, uh, and um, I was unthrilled with that. So I I got real tired of it, but I did like the first season. I'm still going on with it. I I I'm still enjoying it. I it's interesting. I remember reading about something called the Chimera Ant Arc, and apparently it gets very crazy. And I'm just curious, of, like, I know I was curious, of, oh, how could this get crazy? And I didn't look anything up about it because I wanted to be surprised. Yeah, I don't like spoilers either. <laughs> Yeah, and honestly, like, I don't know, maybe they're talking about how many different things happen, because a lot of stuff happens, not to the point where it's hard to keep up with, but just a lot of stuff happens. Yeah. 
well, the background of some of the characters are very unclear. I mean, his his best friend there, I can't remember any names, but his friend it comes from what's clearly a very weird background. Um, so they explain I explain it. Yeah, not in the first season, they sure don't. But um, yeah, the more his family came into it, that was truly weird. And I, I don't know, I was getting bored with the rest of it, so. Yeah, I think I, it's cool. I, I like it a lot. I, I, one thing I like about it is how a lot of anime they have where all of the side characters just kind of feel like they exist to help the main character. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, hey, we just so happen to be at the same place and I need the same thing and blah, blah, blah. But in this, it feels like all of the characters have their all their own things going on that That's would go true. on regardless whether the main character was there or not and they all have like different backstories and it's really interesting. That's very feels very good to me. That I like the characters and that's exactly one thing I liked about them that they they were not just um props. Yeah. Heck, it even gets better once they leave the test because like you know everybody's there to you know get a test done and you know they all have their own things for that but then like once you like further out it's it's like they the characters just get more interesting with their own motives and stuff that's i really like yeah as long as you like it keep on watching it It's so disappointing when you have one you like and it doesn't go on. You know, yeah. <laughs> you go, but I'm getting to like this. How, how come there's not another season? I tried out watching uh, Dohiro, do Doro He Doro. I, I like that. Mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with that one. It's the one with the guy with the lizard head. I can remember a lizard head. I don't think I've seen that one. But it sure does sound like you, Mikey. <laughs> yeah, you draw lots of reptilian people. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like his lizard head. One thing, it was very a pleasant surprise to me that it that he was the main character because for the longest time, I thought he was a side character to like some young boy who was probably the protagonist. But no, the lizard man is the character. There's no young boy. Wow. <laughs> So that's that was fun to me. That was very fun. I like how gritty it is. It's very it's got like a very gritty style that's even grittier in the in the, in the manga, I think. Mm -hmm. Like it shows off like a lot of imperf I don't know how like in a lot of anime when you look at a background, everything looks very clean and nice and sterile and kind of sterile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in this it's like I don't know, just like the, like everything is kind of lived in. And it's like, it's kind of rare you go to a place that's really sterile. Only like, I know some like rich guy's mansion is pretty nice, but mm -hmm. like the restaurant that the main character goes to all the time, it's like, it's interesting. It's got like uh, inside of it, it's like, it's kind of like grime, but not to the point where it's gross, but more like, you know, just kind of like an actual restaurant like if you went to the back of the actual restaurant like <laughs> and they also have flat what's those like the tape that catches flies oh like uh you know fly, fly paper <laughs> yeah fly paper yeah like they've got actual fly paper in the restaurant and that part of it was really interesting to me Little i also details like, like that yeah yeah, I also like how the main two factions, like there are two factions, 
and they give a good reason about why sorcerers and regular people hate each other so much like there's a reason why and it's not just oh we're different and there's history and blah blah yeah blah. or we've no, just been at war for generations each other. <laughs> yeah And I, I don't know if I could, if you want, you'd want me to spoil it for you, but I just think it's really in, neat. We don't want you to spoil it. No spoilers. <laughs> I might want to watch it someday. I don't know yet, but still, it's still on the, I was on the Netflix. Is, is the Dragon's Prince still on Netflix? Yeah. Yeah, but there's no new season yet, so we're still waiting. Well, that's all right, because I haven't seen it since the first season, so I can. Oh, that. yeah. You can go yeah, back and rewatch the first season. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How many Hilda seasons are there? Oh, they released uh, a new one. Is it four now? Three? I don't know, three maybe. How about um Gravity Falls? That ended a while ago. Oh this season's only, right? Yeah. Too bad. I like that. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool of the guy to like just say like, nah, the story ended where it ended. I don't want to continue it. Well, sometimes that's better than having it just peter out and get really boring or have yeah. it, because if you like a character, you hate to see him get boring. Okay. Yeah, I remember there's also like a cut like the book or like you release like you know a book. I have the like like a physical version of like journal three that I have in my in my shelf near me. And he also released like there's a little comic about like one of the uncles and the kids traveling through different dimensions that's technically not canon, but has like a part that is canon. Like, you know, the a lot of it's interesting. It's interesting. So that's a book? That's a comic. Like the comic is the one where they go through dimensions. Mm. It's neat. I I haven't read it, but it's neat. It's... Oh right, so there's okay, my. I have a person. Uh oh, I character. We forgot to draw something. Whoops. No worries. These are things you guys can easily practice during the week if you like. For clouds, I'm just going to keep the rule of thumb that the closer they are, the higher they are, and the bigger they are. So my big close clouds are going to be up here. My skinny little clouds are going to be near the bottom. This is reverse to what we normally do on the ground, and that kind of makes sense because it's now in the sky. So I'll put some big fluffy cloud here. Trying not so much to do the kindergarten or like Andy's room in Toy Story, not doing that so much, but trying to keep them really wavy and irregular. And also light, so light. That's actually one of our lesser used best practice words is density. These are so far away that we don't want the lines to be as dark as our character lines. Better go back and darken up the character, right? Eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> If it's starting to look a little bit like wallpaper, a little too evenly spaced, just throw in a couple more little clouds. To kind of cluster and group them in one area. And it also helps if they go behind your character. If they just kind of stay away from your character, it doesn't really become an immersive background. It's just detail around the edges. I 
to get a little lighting dynamics going, I'm going to go ahead and shade in just kind of lightly the top part of my clouds. Give it a sunset kind of a vibe. Lighter shading on the clouds that are closer to the horizon because that's where the sun is. So these shadows are going to be lighter as they get more reflective light. Up here, they'll be darker and they don't get as much. And it's easier to do on a practice drawing, but I'm actually going to shade in most of her and leave just a rim light on the edge to match the lighting of the clouds. I'm going to color in almost everything. Okay, I'm sort of confused about the lighting because the tops of the clouds are dark, so it seems like the lighting is coming up. Yes. But then under her chin, it's really dark, like the light is coming down. Yes, I should lighten up that um, neck shadow there. That's more like force of habit. <laughs>
Here's just a quick comparison. I started out with oh. a character study with nothing blank void. And then we had a story because we have background and context. So how, how did you manage to have both of those? I took a picture after I drew my character with my phone. That's and true. then I took another picture. Pretty cool. Uh, yeah, just so we can have a little side by side view. I can't do that as easily as with digital, but I'll have to remember to keep taking pictures. Yeah. And for our last trick, let's see, 605. Yeah, I think we'll have time for it. Okay, I'm going to show you mine. I'm, I'm not as successful with the shadows because I just couldn't quite bring myself to shadowing the whole thing. I kept thinking the sun will be on her face. <laughs> but still, the clouds are looking nice. Looks like an actual full illustration in a world. Yeah, the clouds make all the difference. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to riffle through my sketchbook and find a character that doesn't have a background that should have a background. Something kind of easy that has, oh, that's schoolwork. Oh, here's one. There was a D&D &D character idea in a void but I can very easily stick in either that wall or the clouds and make it much more of a full composition. In fact, I'll still use pen so that it uh, looks like it goes together. So if I decide a wall, I have to take a cue from my character. I can't just haphazardly decide where the horizon line is because if I put the horizon line down here, it won't make won't sense, right? Work. <laughs> won't work. So a good indicator is usually belts or any kind of horizontal curve, if they're curving down, I know the horizon line is above that. If anything's curving up, then the horizon line is below that. So this belt is looking pretty flat, pretty Rebel. neutral to me. Yeah. yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and just stick in my straightish horizontal line there. I'll do the same thing where I have a shallow, shallow angle that makes just this wedge at the top. Cut that in half. Cut that in half again. And I'm just mirroring on this side. I could go all the way down. And we throw in our verticals. I won't do the whole thing, but just showing you what you're going to be doing next. And then add details where necessary or where they might help draw the eye. I like to have the contrast up here. There's not a whole lot of reason for me to put dark little shadows down here and draw your eye down here when there's nothing going on. I would probably want you to stick up here near the character's face, near the detail of the sun all that kind of stuff. But yeah, find some characters that you've already drawn. I know you've drawn at least your characters for D&D from last month. Find one that you use uh, some background. This one might be nice for some clouds. Just completes a picture. You can get some kind of background in there. Okay, let's find another one. Here's that one's not too bad. Let's say I don't have a finished figure. So you decide, okay, I want my composition to be 
this as if it were drawn on a vertical piece of paper. Then you can go ahead and say, okay, cool. Now I can put in my wall. I can see that if this person were wearing a belt, it would be pretty flat. Seems that I have a habit of putting the horizon line at the belt line. Skinny wedge there. Maybe these stones are more irregular. Then you start looking up references of crazy stonework. Make it more interesting. Cut it up in weird, unusual ways, just following a couple of those perspective lines that you put in for yourself. Darken in a couple of the crevices. Maybe throw in a little dandelion that happened to grow out. And you start getting just a sense of, wow, now this character is in a place. So yeah, we've got about, what, 15 minutes? Find a character. Find a character that is sadly in a void of nothing. You may even want to take a picture so you can do a before and after. Hi. You didn't get my text, did they? Nope. Um, hold on. I asked you if you wanted a strawberry lemonade, a lemonade, or a diet Pepsi. Uh, strawberry lemonade, please. Okay. Thank you. Okay. No, God, I know what you want. Okay, well, oh, I really like that drawing, Betsy. When you're oh, done, thank you. Yeah, she's nice. Whoops, I should mute this. Sorry about that. No worries. Oh, I'll have the strawberry too. Yeah, me too. Strawberry lemonade is <laughs> the best. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm talking to my dad. He made some promises. And now we're going to have some fast food tonight. Nice. Ho hope it's not Applebee's. <laughs> Yeah, one thing I, I want to do is like, I really like the um, chicken sandwich from Popeyes. That's really good. Mm. So in a lot, and my dad hates going to Popeyes because they have this thing where if you go in, they won't, they'll make, they'll only make it for you while you're there. Even if you pre order it, they won't make it until you arrive. So, uh -huh. yeah, so we're, I, I suggest doing this thing where I want to try all these like knockoff versions that a bunch of different restaurants are making and I want to you know try them and see if any of them live up to the live original. up to it yeah. yeah yeah seeking the great chicken sandwich that, that <laughs> sounds like they're having some sort of taco trail thing around Stockton they want you to go to all the different taco places Ooh. I, I don't know Ooh. if they're going to produce a little map or what I, but I 
I'm not drawing because I'm having so much fun watching Betsy. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I see, I, I, I need to create some characters here. I, I threw away a lot of my sketches from before, but that was possibly not the smartest thing I could ever do. Yeah, I guess, I mean, just having something to practice more on is always nice to have. Let's do the other way. Let's say we split it down that way. Let's say the horizon line is at the mouth. And if you're feeling adventurous, you start making these into windows or something else. Oh, it's going to be a building or a, a wall that's more than bricks. Yeah. Maybe that's a far off building of some sort that might also be made out of bricks. <laughs> we'll keep going on our, our theme. Yeah. Oh, wait, Betsy, can I ask you a random question? Sure. Did, did you fall out of My Hero Academia? Uh, I never got past the first couple of episodes, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I I don't know why it didn't grab me so much. Yeah, like one thing I hear a lot of people say is like they watched it like the first couple episodes and everybody was hyped and stuff. Mm -hmm. But then like eventually everybody just kind of fell out of it. I watched all of it. Oh, <laughs> well, first I, all of it? I liked it. <laughs> yeah. Well, they I, had relationships you know like all those kids had parents and they and their parents all came in yeah, that's there. rare <laughs> yeah yeah and they had you know, relationships with other adults who were their their mentors and their oh that's really great Cloud. i stopped watching right before they started camping like right before they were about to all go camping that's when i stopped yeah, they got in big trouble on camping and then they all had to move into a dorm so they could be protected in there. And so their Ooh. parents all had to make the decision to let those kids go. Wow. And I didn't get that far in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think like um, um, my friend, um, my friend, I can't, dang it. Yeah, well, anyway, like that girl, you know, know that girl who um, came? Yeah, yeah, the one in YouTube would draw each other's characters sometimes. Yeah, that was I, Angelina. I, I miss her. Yeah, Angelina. I, I miss Angelina. Um. Um. Anyway, I remember we, like, one thing was cool. I think it was her. She, like, one thing was she actually watched anime. And one cool thing about having a friend who actually finishes anime is you can just ask them how it ends and not have to actually watch it. <laughs> That's called a spoiler, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as far as I know, oh, that thing is still going. Like, that dude is still, like, doing the, 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 the manga, right? Oh, there's always a new one in there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's always yeah. a new one. It's kind of funny. I fell out of it a while ago, but my mom got me. Like, you know, my mom from my birthday, she was looking at Hot Topic for my birthday. And she got me a My Hero Academia slash Sanrio t-shirt. Really? How did what? they slash it? <laughs> yeah. Well, there was... I guess they had like like Sanrio had like a bunch of collaborations recently with stuff mm -hmm. and one of those like there was some cute merch actually where it's like Sanrio characters dressed as My Hero Academia. Oh, sadly my okay. shirt does not feature that sadly it's just the My Hero Academia and Sanrio characters like in like their heads in little blocks sadly. Oh yeah oh. but um anyway yeah i think they did it with other animes too that i did not watch but i don't know if you go to hot topic and search sanrio you'll you can probably like find some of that merch like you know oh, shadow them. yeah yeah just make him look like he's standing there even more yeah 
I feel bad though. Part of me almost wants to get back into it, like almost exclusively, because my mom used her money to buy that shirt that I do not think we can refund. No. Like <laughs> opened it. You're allowed to wear the shirt even if you haven't seen all the episodes. Yeah. Or any of them. I mean, sometimes I just see a character I really like and I, I don't know anything about where it came from, but I still like that character. Yeah. So hopefully that was easy and applicable and you'll remember how to do it for when uh, you have your next character drawing. You at least have two options. Well, actually three options of brick wall, sky, or some kind of combination, combination. of both. Yeah, a combination of the two. So we should have some characters ready for next time, whether they're digital or drawn. They, we need several. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we do lots and lots of practice. So definitely keep your character sketches even if it's just a head right we were just doing basically head even if you're just doing waist up it still works to put that background in 